Welcome to the Own It Paracast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 142, Healthier Communication, Practicing Good Detachment. Welcome back to our theme of healthy communication this month and why I think it's so crucial to have it in our relationships if we want healthier ones. You know, I often work with clients around what I call the three legs of the healthy communication stool, and those are healthy boundaries, detachment, and empathy, because I think they all work together for healthy communication and better connection, and we can't leave one of them out. Do you remember last week we mentioned some of the unhealthy things we can do in our communication, like interrupting, criticism, or not being emotionally present, and or overstepping in some kind of controlling, overcaring way? I think the big thing we can also do is not offer any empathy or expressed understanding. Since most of us either suck at it, or don't think to do it, or don't think we know how to do it. But before we get into this, I think, especially thinking about empathy, I just want to put some thoughts out there for those folks in Ukraine. And, you know, may we have compassion and understanding and support for anyone going through something like that. War is awful, no matter how you slice it. Suffering is awful. So you hear me talk all the time about why we need boundaries in our communication for it to feel safe. Because when someone is telling you about you, shaming you, manipulating you, guilting you, questioning you, it's not safe for you to have your feelings, your thoughts, your boundaries, your needs. Someone is invading your psychological and your emotional space. They're not showing acceptance and at least respect. They don't have to agree with you to respect your boundaries. So you're not being honored and you're not being valued. I don't think it's any different than someone breaking into your house or stealing your things. So detachment goes with boundaries because detachment means we let go of what's going on for someone else and we refocus on ourselves. We let them take responsibility for them. That's the other reason why it makes relationships safer, I think, because if you're trying to fix something that belongs to someone else, you know deep down you can't. And so here comes your anxiety and your anger and your frustration. All it does is stress you out. And it also doesn't allow them to take responsibility for what they need to do, whatever that may be. So boundaries are important. They create the healthy separateness where they end and you begin. It creates clarity around who owns what, whose feelings, whose thoughts, whose choices, whose behaviors, who's responsible. Otherwise, it's very muddy and messy and very difficult to resolve. That's why we have contracts. That's why we have fences. That's why we have property lines. There's a reason for that. Because we've learned the hard way over the years that when you have blurred boundaries, it can make it very difficult to resolve issues, to solve problems, and to make decisions. The other piece is that I think only emotionally honest communication is real. I think the rest of it is contrived and can be to the point of fake. Where we're managing impressions rather than connecting authentically. We want people to think we're nice, we're funny, we're smart, we have our shit together. Or that we care about them. What we forget is people feel it in their gut when we're not being genuine. When we're holding back even just a little bit when we're trying to put on a face, when we're trying to say things that we should say, but don't really feel or mean. But that's why detachment is such a huge part, ironically, of expressing ourselves genuinely, because we have to get back on our side 
get real with ourselves, then share that truth. And it's really hard to be genuine when you are caught up in the outcomes of another person. So what is detachment really? And I don't mean emotional detachment. When you look that up, that means not feeling anything. I'm talking about healthy detachment with love or compassion or caring. Doesn't mean we don't care. We just take our hands off of it. Some things that are hard to let go of, especially when it's someone you care about, is detaching from wanting to be right, for having the best answers. And maybe you do. Maybe in reality you do. They shouldn't jump off a cliff and you're right. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. That's their decision. Detaching from someone's process, how they get from A to B, we've talked about that. That's huge because we want to control their process so they don't mess up, so they don't go down the wrong street, so they don't make the wrong decisions along the way that blow up the outcome that we want to have control over. Now again, of course, the first time your kid walks to the bus stop, the first time your child walks to their friend's house, you don't want them to take a detour and go down the wrong street and get lost. Well, we don't want loved ones to take detours either. We want to control the minutia of their process because we have no trust, perhaps, that they can do it on their own. And more importantly, it's hard for us to let go and let the process be the process and let the outcome be the outcome, whatever that may be. Another way we have a hard time detaching is we don't want to be questioned. We don't want to be judged, criticized, shamed, or emotionally abandoned in the moment. So we try to control the outcome. We avoid difficult conversations. We don't confront. We people please. We pretend to agree when we don't. All kinds of emotional dishonesty. Now, I'm not talking about healthy confrontation when maybe we've hurt someone and they're using I statements and telling us about them not shaming us. I'm talking about our fear of being attacked or ashamed or manipulated or abused. If you have that fear, it's because it happened in your past and either overt ways or very subtle covert ones. It doesn't matter. We want to know that we're not awful people, that we haven't hurt someone either, that we haven't hurt their feelings or created stress in their life or created big drama in their life, maybe big consequences. If you don't jump in and rescue someone, they're going to hit the floor. And you don't want to feel responsible for that. Now, first of all, who does? But second of all, if you really struggle with that, that tells me you grew up with people who blurred your boundaries. And we've talked about this many times, like you were responsible for mom's feelings or for dad getting pissed and losing it. That somehow you caused that. There was no healthy separateness growing up. You were manipulated and guilted. So it's really hard for you to imagine that you're not the bad guy here. That you shouldn't upset the apple cart and you shouldn't upset people and cause them pain, even if it's pain that should make them grow. So detachment is letting go of what happens. That's not being irresponsible. I'm not saying we can go lash out at people and say, oh, well. But if we show up authentically with an I statement, we stay on our side and we don't try to stop things from happening or create outcomes, then we're taking a risk and we're allowing reality to play out. Detachment has a lot to do with boundaries in that regard, as you can see now. It's about acceptance of reality. Do you think you struggle with detachment? How would you know? Well, do you worry a lot? Do you even obsess about that person and or that situation a lot and you can't let it go and you can't focus and you can't concentrate on what's in front of you? Thinking about what they're doing or not doing? Are they taking care of things the way you would want them to? Are they still upset about the conversation you had that you keep rerunning in your head wishing you had said something different? Your focus is out there on them and or it. Usually hand in hand with this, do you try to rescue people from making choices you don't think are great? Like maybe financially in their life, career decisions, parenting, their relationships, their health? their relationship with you? Are you bailing people out financially? Are you doing for instead of confronting and saying, hey, I need you to do your own laundry? 
or I need you to clean up your own messes, literally and figuratively. Rescuing them, remember, is not rescuing them. It's rescuing you from the reality at hand. Because if you face that, that would be opening a can that you don't want to open. So it's actually emotionally dishonest, isn't it, when we rescue? Do you feel like you have to point out the obvious a lot to them or keep asking and asking or reminding every day, week, month what is coming up or what needs to happen because they are choosing not to pay attention to that? Maybe what they should do to take care of something. There's a famous one. If you just do this, when we don't detach, we take responsibility for another person's actions, feelings, behaviors, and outcomes. And why do you want control? We talked about a minute ago. You're too attached to what happens. Which, guys, come on. I mean, when the stakes are high and these are people we care about, it's hard not to want to. Just because you want to doesn't make you controlling. Acting on it makes you controlling. And part of this is delusional thinking. Like, we know best all the time. We know exactly what should happen. And that's not always true. So there's a little bit of grandiosity in there too, right? Like we run the universe. We know what all the variables are and we can predict the future. The truth is that we're terrified. We're so afraid of trusting things to play out and that it'll be okay. Because maybe in the past it wasn't okay. It was awful perhaps for you. People got very upset. They were raging, they were threatening, or they withdrew love. They left, they punished you. All of it is about abandonment. It's that terror of letting go. And if you struggle with that, then I encourage a lot of boundary work as you're working through the ability to detach. Okay, so how how do you detach? And first of all, this is a process that takes time. It's such a simple concept and so hard to play out. And what we need to remember is we do it in such subtle ways that we may not even see how we're not detaching until we see how we're not detaching. So when you start working on it, you'll start noticing everywhere in your life. And you'll start noticing when other people have a hard time detaching. But how do you practice detachment? First, bring it back to you, do the who owns what. Okay, that's about them. They didn't pay their bills, bring it back to me. What is about me? Find my feelings. Okay, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, I'm sad. Then find the fear. What if they don't? Then they might be on the street. Then what? Then I have to worry about them being in a shelter. Da, 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 da. So pull that thought all the way through. Then you can identify the outcome or outcomes that you're truly afraid of. And it doesn't mean that you're being unrealistic. This could very well be the possible outcome for them. But then I want you to find the self-esteem or other identity issues. Makes you a bad parent, doesn't it? Makes you a bad sister. Perhaps makes you a bad friend if you don't bail them out and rescue them. Or berate them for what they're doing or not doing inserting yourself into the process. Remember, detachment just because you doesn't mean they. Just because you know that this isn't going to go well doesn't mean they even see that, that they even care about that, or that they're even ready to get it together. Just because you think it would be better for them to pay their bills doesn't mean they're in that space. And you may not like that. And again, you can go back to find your feelings, find your fear, find the identity piece. Then you can grieve. One of our favorite things to do, right? But then you need to set boundaries for yourself, not with them, with yourself. And I encourage you to get some loving accountability in your own life when you're working on detachment, because you need to tell on yourself when you blow it. So maybe some boundaries are you won't call them, you won't text, you won't email, you won't show up in the person's life that you're trying to control. You won't ask anymore, you tell yourself. You say, I'll let them tell me and I won't pry. Whatever's gonna play out, it's gonna play out. I want them to take responsibility. 
I want them to come to me and say, you know, I realized that was such a bad move and here's what I'm doing to make it better. Or, more realistically, they're going to call you and cry and bitch and moan and play victim and poor me and I can't believe this is happening and how, how dare these people want me to pay the gas bill kind of thing. Don't they understand? This is when it's hardest to use empathy, but you're going to set a boundary for yourself and you're going to practice using empathy and keep their stuff about them. They're crazy about them. And then you say, I might even keep my stuff about me so I don't guilt or manipulate in other ways. Like, oh my God, I've been, I've been so worried and upset. So don't make it about you. We know that none of us makes good decisions or changes or makes better decisions until first we have some love and acceptance of somebody who isn't going to judge us. They're not going to fix us, but they tell us that we can do better. But they let us do better. Because guys, what that crazy person in your life needs is what we all need. We need validation. We all need to know that we aren't crazy. And what we think or feel or need or want isn't either because it's what we need or think or want. It's true for us. We also need to know that we can trust our thoughts and our feelings, even if we want to change them later, it doesn't matter. That we can create self-trust. And what we forget is when we do that for someone else, we're also helping to raise their self-esteem. Here's what I believe. If someone really starts working on their self-esteem, they're going to want to take responsibility for their life. That's what we forget. That we're fulfilling the very prophecy we're terrified of by trying to fix them instead of stepping back, detaching, and showing empathy. So how do you show empathy? You take a moment and you imagine what it must be like for them. And connect it conceptually only, I think, to what you've experienced. Like, at this point, we've all had fear. We've had anger. We have felt hurt, disappointment, trauma, sadness, elation, joy, anxiety. We've all had conflicting feelings. We've had internal conflict where we're just not sure what to do. So put yourself in their shoes first and just conceptually try to grab the gist of it. You probably haven't walked through what they're walking through right now and you don't need to. Because all that matters is what is it feeling like for them? Then validate. And here are some phrases that you can use to practice with to show empathy and caring and understanding. You can say, wow, it must be great to have your husband home from the hospital. You must be so relieved. I mean, you just imagine what it would be like if your partner was in the hospital and to finally have them home and for it to be over. Or I would feel X too if that was going on for me. Yep, we identify. Makes sense that you would think that. Or I'm just so sorry you have to walk through this. So we're not fixing them. There's nothing else we can say to make them feel better kind of thing. That's when we say, I'm just so sorry. We're just validating how awful it is. Or I can imagine how hard that must be. I think it would be hard for anyone. So in other words, they're not alone and they're not crazy for feeling what they're feeling. Or if I'm understanding correctly, or can you explain a bit more to me so I can understand? Because sometimes we don't get enough detail and it's really healthy for them to peel another layer and get more vulnerable and share what's really going on. Or that is so exciting. You must be so proud of yourself. Or I wish I had been there with you when that happened so you didn't have to walk through it alone. Or that must have really hurt. Or yeah, that makes sense. Feeling mad and sad at the same time. Now, like we mentioned earlier, when you just can't, like you can't even validate 
that what they're feeling makes perfect sense and that they should and all that great stuff, you can still mirror back what they are experiencing. So they want you, let's say, for example, agree with what they think about a shared friend, mutual boss, a parent, somebody, and you don't feel that way, right? And you think it's kind of crazy that they feel how they feel and you want to fix that. You don't want them to feel that way. Maybe you're afraid they're going to act on it because they're like, you know, our boss is a real jerk and I'm going to show him. <laughs> Try to keep it general without commenting. And this can take practice and you're not going to do this beautifully at first and it's okay. But try to say things like, wow, that must be really frustrating. Instead of saying, what do you mean you hate mom? That's awful. That's even crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> now, they might be being crazy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. What you think is what you think that's about you. Their process is about them. Now, you can still set boundaries. Like, I'm not going to support you doing that, man. I'm not going to join you in that. I respect that's how you feel about mom. But that's not me. See the healthy separateness. See the detachment. So the other thing I want to say about empathy, which takes time and practice and mindfulness, is that you're going to start out really awkward and stiff, and you're going to feel silly and ridiculous and inept. Everyone does. It feels stiff and awkward because we haven't done this before. You know, if you didn't have empathy modeled for you and shown to you, it's going to be really hard for you to do that naturally for someone. It isn't internalized yet. So again, it's going to take you a while. But what you want to practice doing is showing up as authentically as you can. Really trying to get in someone's shoes for a moment and feel those times when you were frustrated or excited or hurt. And here's the thing. If you have locked down a lot of hurt and trauma in your life and you haven't grieved that yet, that's also going to be really tough. I think empathy is an inside out job. That's my personal opinion. When I've done my own work around it years ago, I noticed that organically, once I started healing some things within me, validating my own truth, that I naturally wanted to do that for others. I didn't have to make myself want to do that. But I also still had to work on showing up authentically where my tone, my inflection, my use of words, my body language really turning towards someone emotionally and making it sound real. Like, oh my God, I'm so excited for you. As opposed to saying, oh, wow, that's great. I'm so excited for you. So making sure everything is congruent and matched. And I tell clients, remember those moments when you were so unguarded, like maybe around your best friend or by yourself and the team scored a big point and you just jumped off the couch and said, yes, that's awesome. Or had your real feelings with your dog. That's where I want you to go. That's what we express when we're not worried about what people think. We're not worried about doing it perfectly. Because perfectionism can really get in the way of showing empathy. Because it's all about you. Because you all of a sudden you make it about you doing it perfectly. As opposed to showing up and being there for them. Put yourself in that person's shoes. When have people not shown up for you? When have they not validated what was going on for you? When did they let your words fall on the floor or try to talk you out of what you're feeling, saying, oh, it'll be all right, don't worry about that? Or twisting it and making it about them. I want you to remember this week, unfortunately, those moments where that really mattered and that really hurt. Do you want to do that to those you care about? Of course not. Then I want you to think about those moments, or maybe it's just one in your life, where someone showed up and they validated you and they heard you and they got it. And they just let you be and sit in your feelings and share more and go deeper and feel heard and accepted and loved. 
That's the kind of genuineness that you want in your empathy work. But that is also why we have to have boundaries. We have to detach, take our hands off what's going on out there and go within. So today we focused on a very important part of creating safe communication, and that is practicing detachment and empathy. We explored how it's hard to let go. It's hard sometimes to refocus on ourselves and to allow them to be wherever they are or for the outcomes to simply unfold as they would anyway. Then we discussed ways to practice empathy and understanding. And we talked about some simple examples to get you started and some things to think about as you practice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you grab some things that you can use right away. May you stay healthy, grounded, hold on to hope. Find some good this week and be there for each other. Check the show notes at ownitpowercast.com if you still need to get the newsletter and share the podcast with those that you think could benefit. All right, so pay it forward. Keep focusing on you and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you could begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.